Might be too late. This isn't supposed to happen during summer lambing. What are we doing here? They're not very interested in romance right now. Look who's in labor. What are you doing, Marge? You're sitting on her, though. It's Billy's brother. <laughs> Good morning. <gasps> oh no. Hi puppy. Hi. Let's get you up inside. Oh. You're still warm. That's good. How about your mouth? Mouth is cold. Okay. We'll get you wiped off. Does mom like you? Does she like you? Oh, you lambs. What are we doing here? Really? You found the one little place. Are you training to be a mom? Okay, let's stay on this side of the gate. Yeah. You okay? to be fine. I'm gonna give this one a de dextrose treatment, get it warmed up, see if I can get a tube of colostrum into it. Might be too late. Okay, well, Muffin, let's get you washed up first. So I got a pail of warm water, warm soapy water, just to get that gunk off it. Warm it up. Because even before you feed it, it needs, its body temperature needs warmed up. Okay. Give it some flatter. And then we'll just punch it up. Okay. Now, did I bring out all those blankets that I had to set, set aside? No, I did not. I'll well, just wrap her up in Jess's hoodie again. Sorry, Jess. All right, I'm gonna find the thermometer and take its temperature, and we'll try and fix this guy. All right, I found my chart. I shared it, I think, in the last lambing session. It's a really good flow chart. First, so first of all, I gotta take a temperature. Honestly, brand new and it doesn't work. Oh, that's so frustrating. We're just gonna treat it with dextrose. I'm just gonna do it. It looks, it looks really weak. Okay, found my dextrose. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna do, I believe it's uh, 20 mils of the dextrose, 30 mils of water. It's supposed to be sterile water, but it's gonna be water. And then I'm gonna do it inner perineal, which is by the belly button. Not by the belly button, an inch out and an inch down on an angle. Hi, sweetie. So I go an inch, an inch to the side of the belly and an inch down. And they say it just, when you put this in, it should just push the organs aside. I'm going to do 25 on one side. You're pretty alert for doing this. Usually they're almost ditto. You're a little girl too. Alright. So now... Your shirt's soaked. This side's. I need something to dry you off. Hi. Do you have a sucking reflex? Oh, a little bit. Okay. We'll see if it'll drink. I don't think it will, but. Try? bring the bottle to the house, sit it by the fire, my family's going to kill me because it's worn out, and let it warm up. So this isn't supposed to happen during summer lambing. Hi. How are you doing? Huh? 
You're attracting the flies in my house. Got it all dried off with a hair blower. Tried to feed you some milk. You're still not quite there. What do you think? All right, I had to resort to my tube. I don't like tubing. I'm not good at it. I'm gonna be completely honest. Um, but it went down, no problem. So 150 mils is in my baby. Hopefully it's not too late, but we're gonna check you in a bit. Okay? Yeah. There is a lot going on right now. It's really loud, I apologize. Jack is doing hay. Mark is filling up his sprayer because he's going to side dress his corn. And Jess and I, until Carissa gets here, are gonna start bringing up some ewe lambs to get their second, their booster of their chlamydia vac. And we're also gonna cedar them because they're gonna get bred in 13 days as of today. So I think that's the 15th of July. So we're going to start with their pen, bring them up, and then we're going to do the mature use which are in the back corner. Remember, three weeks ago, we gave their first dose of their chlamydia vaccine. Uh, it's just to prevent first time use, can pick up chlamydia pretty easy. We've got it in the flock and, uh, and it can cause abortions. So this is what I've been on this program since like, I don't remember, 2015, 2016. Uh, and we're pretty religious about it. So uh, this is their last dose before they get uh, bred, hopefully. And I'm also, I'm also cedaring them while I got them in here. I have Chris now, so I've got like a full team, so this should be much easier to do. We also use cedars. This is July, and in Canada, in July, sheep typically don't want to get bred. They're not very interested in romance right now, so we use this. Partly, I use these to tighten up my lambing group, so it synchronizes their heat. So I will pull these in 13 days, 12 to 14 days, so I always aim for 13. I will pull the cedar. They should come into heat about 24 hours later, so that's what this little guy does. It's like an IUD. This is the applicator that we use. We squirt a little bit of lubricant on it, just especially ewe lambs, just needs a little more persuasion. Uh, and then when we pull these in 13 days, they'll also get an injection of PMSG, which is, just helps stimulate uh, egg drop. So that is what we're doing with this group. Um, these guys are September ewe lambs. I've never actually bred September ewe lambs in July. This is a Hail Mary. Uh, I don't recommend doing this, but what I really am hoping to do, even if I have a 50% scan, it will bring a little more into this next group because it's too small. So I'm trying to make my groups, I usually aim to have my groups between 100 and 150 lambing. The next group, that mature group, is just too small. So I'm trying to, even if I get a poor conception on these guys, as long as there's some, it makes those groups a little more efficient. And then for my natural breed in October, it's not crazy big because I only have so much room to lamb them in. So that's kind of the logic behind it all. Okay, 
on a mature use, they're much nicer. Last round. We were given some advice last year by our neighbor, and he said, when you do hay, always do the last or the very first headland, leave it to the very end. Because typically, when we always start doing hay, we hit something. Like we hit a stone or we hit. A, a branch we don't see and that and then you've got you've got to fix the hay vine before you do the rest of the field whereas now Mark leaves that to the very end and if the hay vine breaks you're done your field so it's kind of kind of brilliant I don't know why I've never thought of that before but I'm here with Jack Guys, look who's in labor. She's just starting to vocalize right now. Aren't ya? It's my girl. Oh, poor Margie. What are you doing, Marge? You've become the Playground. Are you a playground? Hey? Okay. <gasps> You're sitting on her though. That's a good baby. left for 10 minutes and that came out of you. Well done. Mm -hmm. Such a good mom. I love her so much. Yeah. Are you having another one? Oh, look who just came up. You had a lamb and you ignored it. All right, I'm gonna check Bailey's mama for number two. Good girl. Hi, baby. Gorgeous. <laughs> Hi. Good mom. Good mom. You're a little boy. Billy's brother. Say hi! 
You're beautiful. Let's go see mom. Stick to the camera. Just gonna touch you. Good. Oh, beautiful. Milk. Welcome. Well, my little nugget has not really improved all day. It's about 8 o'clock at night. We've got three tubes into it today. And it's just not turning the corner. Still has a cold mouth. Not as cold, but still no sucking reflex at all. If anything, it's worse. So we're gonna tube it one more time, and call it a night, and hopefully it's still here in the morning. So sweet. It appears lambing is almost done. Today is day 20, tomorrow is day 21, which technically should be the last day of lambing. Today is also hay day. I don't know if you can see that out there. That awaits us, so. Up and at him pretty early this morning. There's only one other thing I wanna check, and I don't have a good feeling about her. I was afraid of that. It got four feedings yesterday, but it never took a walk. It never really tried to get up. It would lift its head and it would look kind of alert. And uh, it just, it never really had a nice warm mouth. Um, I gave it the dextrose injection. I don't know what else I could have done for it. And now I wonder if mom kind of knew and that's uh, why she kind of left it. We tried. Lucy, come. No, oh, it's not near as exciting. It's quarter after two right now. We've been waiting since like eight o'clock this morning to merge these rows together. Typically when Ethan comes, he's got such a big harvester. We put in like two rows into one. I don't even know, he might even do three into one. I'm not sure, like two rows into a third row. Uh, so it just kind of depends how this stuff is yielding. It looks pretty good, but we had a huge heavy dew this morning. So the top was really wet. So what we have to do is let the sun and the wind dry out the top before we flip it. Cause we're literally just flipping a row onto another row. These headlands were done Thursday night. Ooh, see, a little piece of mud off his tire, which is bad for listeriosis. Okay, so this feels pretty good. It's a good mix of wet and dry. So hopefully, hopefully it'll be all right. Another couple hours and we should be good to go, but that means we have to start bagging at like four or five o'clock tonight, which makes for a really long day, but it's fine. The sun is shining now. The clouds are pretty much gone. So hopefully for the rest of the day, it'll just be drying weather. And then whatever's left, we, we're only doing one bag this time. And then whatever's left, we're actually gonna bail. And they're calling for rain all day Tuesday. So we're hoping it will dry enough Monday that we're gonna, we're gonna bail it. And Cody's coming Monday afternoon to wrap it. So that's how we kind of get around storing wettish, not quite dry hay. Come on, Luce, you gotta get out of the way. Come on. Well, since I was 
pretty poor at explaining stuff with first cut. We were just, we were so busy. It's really hard to grab a camera. Everything's super loud, so you wouldn't even be able to hear me even if I was able to speak to the camera. So I'll take a couple seconds now and just kind of tell you what we're doing. Uh, I ran to Ethan's just now and grabbed uh, two of three wagons. He'll bring a wagon with this harvester. Uh, so these are some nice forage wagons, Myers, that he brings. Just to give you a little bit of a backstory, up until last year we had been doing our own haylage with old used equipment that just was not reliable. It kept breaking down. It was really, it was just, it was hard on our marriage. I'm gonna just say that. Uh, lots of breakdowns. Uh, Mark is always, always when we're doing hay, he's always needed somewhere else. So he's usually um, either for first cut he's usually planting edible beans and for second cut he's usually doing this which is side dressing corn so the timing of hay doesn't usually work out real well with with him and in, in uh, with him in the grain side of stuff um, third cut seems to be the one cut that we can all kind of all the stars line and it's usually all right hiring Ethan was quite honestly one of the best decisions we ever made because he comes with wagons and he comes with himself so that's one less person we need which means mark we don't need mark which is awesome jack is home this year so for second cut so that will help immensely so jess will be driving a wagon jack will be driving a wagon and what they basically are doing the harvester i'm gonna jump up here this is the inside of the forage wagon so basically ethan's spout will direct the haylage the chopped haylage it blows basically as far back as it possibly can. It's pretty big. And then there's a walking kind of apron chain at the bottom here, much like my feed cart, to be honest, is very similar. And then these augers at the front basically just carve the feed. So it just drops into this apron chain, this apron chain, and this apron chain then goes into the bagger. Bob's coming with the bagger in a couple hours. And then the bagger pushes all the feed into this big giant basically tube of saran wrap so then everything's airtight and secure and then uh, it just ferments over the next few weeks. Where do you want this for pulling? On my little lava. Nice. Perfect. Snatcher complete. 